emerging victorious and politically stronger than ever, 5th century BC Athens also became a vital center of cultural activity. The 6th century BC saw the emergence of philosophical thought in Ionia. It didn't take much time for mainland Greeks to consider partaking in philosophical activities. The pre-Socratics laid out the foundation for future generations who were to bring philosophy to a full-fledged discipline in ancient Greece. This is the story of a brilliant Athenian man. This is the story of Socrates. Socrates was born in 470 BC in Athens. His father was a sculptor and belonged to the middle class, Zeugitei. Young Socrates wasn't as interested in being a sculptor. During his lifetime, Socrates never left his home city. The only occasions were the visits paid to Samos, Isthmus and Delphi. Also, he was actively participating in Athenian military campaigns during the Peloponnesian War as a hoplite. The battles at which he fought were Potidaea, Delion and Amphipolis. It was said that Socrates saved Alcibiades' life twice during battles, first time at Potidaea and then at Delion. Unlike Plato, Socrates didn't leave any written word about his teachings, nor did he establish a school. He used to be out and about on the streets of Athens and converse with fellow citizens, examining a variety of topics. It is a bit surprising that Socrates didn't participate in state affairs as we would expect him to. We hear of two cases in which Socrates made his opinion publicly known. The Athenians had defeated the Spartans in the Battle of Arginusae, but the officers failed to rescue fellow Athenians from wrecked ships due to a storm. On the incentive of angry relatives of fallen soldiers, the Athenian assembly decided to punish the surviving officers with death. It happened so that Socrates performed the duty of a Prytanis in the council of 500 at that time. He stepped out and argued it would be unjust to do such thing. His call to reason wasn't accepted and the officer suffered capital punishment. The second occasion was when Socrates refused to obey the will of the 30 tyrants who had come to power after the Athenian defeat in the Peloponnesian War. Their rule was marked by fierce persecution of political opponents, resulting in the killing of 5% of the Athenian population. Socrates was once a teacher of Critias, the leading force of the 30 tyrants. He was given a task to find and bring back a fleeing citizen by the name of Leon, but refused. Only the timely fall of the tyrannical regime saved Socrates from their retribution. To understand the causes behind Socrates' destiny of becoming a martyr slain by the will of his own citizens, we have to analyze the circumstances in Athens during the later stage of the Peloponnesian War. The social climate of Athens after the death of Pericles was like this. The second and third generations, born under a democratic regime, brought forth citizens who were entitled to an opportunity to become an influential politician. Those men often relied on seeking support from the demos by appealing to their desires, prejudices or ignorance and promising them some kind of gain in return. A term was coined to designate such activity, demagogy, the act of manipulating the people in order to acquire more power and influence in the state. The reasons for Athens' failure in the Peloponnesian War are numerous and represent a separate, complex topic. The pride of the Athenians was hurt and emotions about the whole outcome involved anger, resignation and lethargy. One of the explanations in the mind of the demagogues could be that the Athenian soldiers didn't fight as bravely and fiercely as their opponents. 
But let us look at the official lawsuit against Socrates, submitted in 399 BC. The prosecutors were Melitos, Anitos, and Lycon. This accusation was submitted and confirmed with an oath by Melitos, son of Melitos from Pytho, against Socrates, son of Sophroniscus from Alopiki. Socrates is guilty of not believing in the same gods the state worships, inventing new gods, and of corrupting the Athenian youth. I propose capital punishment. The hidden meaning behind these accusations must be examined. As mentioned, the war against Sparta was lost, the Athenian Empire shattered, and the state itself crippled by economic and demographic losses. Who was to blame? An average Athenian could ask. The re-established democratic regime could be the answer. On top of that, Socrates was well known as a critic of democracy, and since he used to stroll through the Athenian streets and encourage his interlocutors to think about morality, ignorance and examining everyday life in general, voices about Socrates' role in spreading discontent among citizens started raising. The democratic regime, already vulnerable and constantly in danger of an oligarchy coup, couldn't afford to allow Socrates to exacerbate the condition. In fact, he was 70 years old and probable to die sooner or later anyway, but much more important was to send a message. Punishing Socrates meant that such behavior and revolutionary ideas wouldn't be tolerated in the future. Also, the demagogues of this period interpreted the current unenviable situation in Athens as a divine punishment for the impiety and the insolence of the Athenian youth regarding traditions, parents and the homeland. Supposedly, the responsible ones were mainly the sophists and the philosophers who instigated the citizens to question everything around them. The reaction directed against Socrates was intense and is well depicted in Aristophanes' comedies. The fact that Socrates was a teacher to two aristocrats who brought upon Athens much trouble contributed to his doom. The charge of Socrates' alleged impiety was a serious matter for the ancient Greeks. Denying the religion of the state meant questioning everything else, beginning with the ruling authority and traditions. In a patriarchal and a conservative type of society, such as the ancient Greek one, this was out of the question. Although death penalty had been proposed, the prosecutors expected Socrates to leave Athens, which was usual and accepted. However, he stood by his principles and showed up in court. The trial was described by his pupils, Plato and Xenophon. Having listened to Socrates' defense, the judges announced the results of the jury voting. Out of 501, there were 280 votes for Socrates' condemnation, and he was found guilty. The voting concerning the type of the penalty followed. According to Athenian law, the condemned had the right to propose an adequate penalty for himself. However, instead of a fine, Socrates demanded not only free dinners for the rest of his life, but also receiving a wage paid by the Athenian government for the time he had spent as a benefactor of Athens. The jury perceived this act as disrespect, and the majority of votes were in favor of Melito's proposal, death penalty. The last moments of Socrates' life were described by Plato in his Phaedo. In the year of 399 BC, Socrates' life was terminated by drinking the hemlock poison. It was too late when the Athenians realized what had been done. Not long after, the schools in Athens were closed as an act of bereavement. The main prosecutor, Melitos, was condemned to death, while Anitos and Lycon were exiled. In honor of Socrates, a bronze statue was erected. We owe our knowledge of Socrates' philosophy to Plato, Xenophon and Aristotle. In Plato's dialogues, we find him as the main character, engaging in thorough conversations with other characters. Methodologically speaking, it can be a challenge to differentiate which teachings originated directly from Socrates and which from Plato. Yet, 
It is probable that the dashing way of debating philosophical topics comes from Socrates himself. The Socratic method could be one of the most pertinent contributions to Western thought. Dialectic inquiry meant examining the notions of knowledge, good and evil, justice, morality and politics. He is famous for stating, I know that I know nothing. Socrates' genius had no competition. He was considered one of the seven sages by ancient authors. Even to the bitter end, Socrates wouldn't abandon his ethical beliefs. Both Xenophon and Plato agree that Socrates had an opportunity to escape from prison after the trial, as his followers were able to bribe the guards. Socrates believed such act would indicate fear of death, which he believed no true philosopher has. He lived by his beliefs and gave his life, remaining true to all ideas he had considered worthy of dying for. His best-known pupil was Plato, who would deepen his mentor's ideas and become one of the greatest minds of mankind. Socrates, the brilliant Athenian, was immortalized through his sacrifice, leaving an immense impact on the entirety of Western thought. With this, we conclude our brief presentation on Socrates. In future, we will be covering more topics regarding ancient Greek philosophy, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button to be notified. Links to social media pages are in the description. Thank you for watching this documentary about Socrates on the Ancient Greek Logos channel.